next time on Casino Royale with Cheese. She doesn't get found. No. She, she's fine. But fucking Mulder does call her on her phone, like while security's looking for her. Yeah. <laughs> to piggyback what you just said, Mike just said butt fucking, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lordy. All oh, right. Uh, Missed the point completely. <laughs> and uh, one of the aliens is chasing them, mm-hmm. but just as it gets there, a puff of steam kills it? I don't know. Just, pff, they see, see this, like, steam come up, <laughs> alien's gone. Yeah. No, he didn't like that. <laughs> it's like squirting your cat with a water gun. <laughs> don't do that. Okay. That's it, dude. And now, the conclusion. Houston, we have a problem. I have a really bad feeling about this. A boy's best friend is his mother. Hasta la vista, baby. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Rose? Well, we're going, we don't need Rose. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Silent Green is people! Yo, Adrian! I did it! Let's put a smile on that face. I gotta warn you, Clark. They don't play the same games here as they do at them regular casinos. Oh, yeah, old too. Bus boys will fuck anything that moves. Come to my house, the fish stop swimming. Welcome back to Casino Royale with Cheese. This is episode number 23 of the show where we discuss movies that were number one at the box office exactly 20 years ago. My name is Shane. With me today I am joined by the man who talks to his dog whenever they do that funny little peanut butter trick. This is Mike. It's fucking disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) What's up, brother? Oh, shit. You know, just chilling. Rainy day here at the house. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Good. Well, I guess it's good. I don't know. Depends on what you're doing. <laughs> rain's, rain's always good. Yeah. I could, dude, I can take a nap in this stuff, you know. I love it. Yep. Um, How's it going? Well, you said it was going all right, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> are you doing okay, Shane? How are you I'll doing? I'll just keep repeating myself until <laughs> we're done. <laughs> no, man. That's good. Um... We are the show where we discuss movies that were number one exactly 20 years ago. Uh, Last week we did the X-Files movie. We did. And yeah, this week we are discussing Dr. Doolittle. Dr. Doolittle. Dr. Doolittle. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm going to be honest with you, buddy. Um, I've seen this movie more times than I care to admit. Not because I like it in particular. I was like 14 whenever it came out. And uh, so that would have made my younger sister like 10. She's into animals, so this is her thing, you know. Um, right. And so, yeah, it was one of those deals where, you know, I was just kind of had to watch it, you know, unfortunately. Um, and so going into it this week, this is a movie that I was not looking forward to watching at all. Same. Um, yeah. Um, why don't you tell me some of your history with this movie? Well, man, I think I've seen it twice. <clears throat> I saw it obviously like 20 years ago when it came out. Uh, didn't catch it in the theater or anything. I might have even waited until it was on like cable to see it. Uh, yeah. And it, um, I watched it again yesterday. Yeah. That's my history with this movie. There you go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the first time I saw this, we had rented it. Um, and I mean, you know, it doesn't stand out like uh, anything in particular as far as. <laughs> The, the first time I saw it, um, you know, that's, <laughs> that's pretty well, much it, man. You know, I, like I, I, I watched it. When it came it out, I was 19. I was definitely not the target group. No. And that's one thing that I actually, I would like to discuss in this movie. I guess I don't really know who the demographic is that they were really going for, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, there's some times where it's questionable. Well, yeah. I mean, so there's some adult comedy, but adult comedy, as far as like a family film goes, isn't necessarily a deal breaker. Like, Shrek has a bunch of that stuff, but 
you know, my kid loves Shrek, and I can sit down and watch Shrek. It's not like the best thing I've ever seen. But well, all the know. best kid movies have adult comedy in them. Yeah, that's generally a rule of thumb. Yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot in like Toy Story and stuff. Pixar, for the most part, I think they stay away from that. Um, there's always a but, couple jokes in there. That yeah, there's a couple like only laser a... envy and stuff like that. Yeah, like what? Laser envy. He's laser envy, like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They always slide a couple of uh, jokes that only adults would get. Right. But in this movie, it's not like that. No. It's it's pretty adult in some parts. Well, let's but let's my... get let's get to the numbers and then we'll talk about. Them. Okay. Well, first off, um, I I wanted to ask you this. Um, so let's let's go through the the roll call here real quick. Um, okay. As far as the uh, the main players in this thing go, so we got. I Eddie don't even Murphy. really. Yeah, I really don't want to talk about like the main players too much because to me that was the most fun part about the movie. Was uh, figuring name out that who voice? They were. Yeah. Well, and we can do some of that. I'm just going through people we actually see. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, we got Eddie Murphy. Uh, Ossie Davis plays uh, Archer Doolittle, so Doctor John Doolittle's dad, which is Eddie Murphy. Oliver Platt plays a Doctor Mark Weller. Uh, Peter Boyle plays Dude Calloway. Um, Richard Schiff plays Gene Reese. Um, Kristen Wilson, Lisa Doolittle. Uh, we got Jeffrey Tambor, who's the Arrested Development alumni. Love that dude. Yep. Uh, he plays Dr. Fish. He's the veterinarian in this. Uh, Kyla Pratt plays Maya Doolittle. Raven Simone plays Sharice Doolittle, or Paprika, as she prefers to be called, apparently. Or Nutmeg. <laughs> And we get uh, Stephen Gilborn plays Dr. Sam Litvak. So, you know, that is what it is, I guess. Um, so there's a couple of names in there. I don't think Jeffrey Tambor. He'd been around for a while, but he wasn't like a huge name back then. Um, not as big as he is nowadays, especially because he's been in uh, like The Hangover and stuff like that. Um, Raven Simone, she was fairly big. Got her start on the Cosby show. Um... Of course, Eddie Murphy and all that. Oliver Platt, his day was kind of behind him. <laughs> but um, what's well, Eddie your... Murphy at this point is a superstar. Yeah. Um, I mean, everybody knows who Eddie Murphy is. Mm-hmm. What's your um, the thing I was gonna ask? What's your favorite Eddie Murphy movie? My favorite Eddie Murphy movie. Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah it is. Ooh, that's a really good question. Um. For some reason, I'm like going through the different movies in my head, but 48 Hours keeps jumping out at me. 48 Hours is pretty on point. I'm not going to lie. That's a good one. Um, for me, I always default to uh, the original Beverly, Beverly Hills Cop. It's great. It's hilarious. It's got good action. Pretty good story, Wait, think, all that. I think that's what I was thinking of. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fair <laughs> I enough. I think that's what yeah. I was thinking of. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, is, is Eddie Murphy in 48 Hours? He is, right? Yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah, he's in that but one. I was thinking of like the '80s, where he's a cop in like Beverly Hills. Right. <laughs> I think so I was thinking go. of Beverly he's Hills. He's the cop, cop from Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, okay, let's go ahead, I guess, and we're gonna tear into the the numbers on this thing. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I'm not that. It, let, let's just do the numbers. Um, okay. okay. So this thing was made on a budget of seventy and one half million dollars. Um. Dare to let's. How about you take a guess at the uh, number of weeks it was number one here? Three weeks. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had one. It had one week and it was done. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I thought maybe uh, you know, kid movie Eddie Mur uh, Eddie Murphy was enough power to bring it through. And that's kind of what I was thinking, especially if you compare, like the Nutty Professor had come out a few years before this, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was seemed like that was a pretty big deal, you know, and uh, so I would have thought that this would have had a little bit more staying power, but whatever. Um, so seventy and a half million. Uh, what do you think the overall uh, take in the U.S. was domestic? Eighty. Box office? Eighty million. Eighty. Uh, no, it was one hundred forty-four million one hundred fifty-six. Yeah, it did all right. So I guess even though it only had one week, it was still in the top ten for a while. So, it was a yeah. big one week. Yeah, 
that uh, I don't know how how much it actually turned its first week, but yeah, that 144 it, it did all right. Altogether, it brought in close to 300 million, which uh, was automatically gave it you know sequel. It was sequel bait at that point, so it came out. There was a Doctor Doolittle two that was released uh, later on. And then they started doing this like Dr. Doolittle uh, straight to DVD crap where they did like Dr. Doolittle 3, Dr. Doolittle Tale to the Chief, and I guess Million Dollar Mutts. <laughs> so, <laughs> in case you were wondering, and for all you folks out there that give a crap about watching like the entire Dr. Doolittle saga, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there you go. Um, Tale to Eddie, the Chief. Yeah, I guess he's like in the White House and stuff. Or uh, so with the the second one, that's the only one that Eddie Murphy came back for. And I guess in the other ones, his daughter Maya, uh, she was found out that she could talk to animals. Is, and so, is that how the the end of Doctor the Doolittle Two was? She could hear the animals, right? Oh, I don't know. I never watched that thing. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I've only seen the first and second one. I think that like that's the ending of. And, uh, Dr. Doodle 2 is okay. she, Maya can hear the animals too. I got you. Huh? I'll probably never know. So, <laughs> <laughs> Unless it comes up you know, in a couple years and I'm forced to watch it. But. Right. Um, what else was there? Oh, this was directed by a woman named Betty Thomas. Um, crazy thing about her, I guess, is... She was, uh, she went on to do like uh, John Tucker Must Die. Um, what was yeah, some of I think I saw that. that she did. Yeah, uh, she's, she's been in some stuff I'd actually heard of, which is crazy because I'm not, you know, the, the one that's sitting here talking about, you know, like I'm not, people that know me know that I'm not like Mr. Social Justice Warrior or anything like that. But I do think that there is kind of a weird paradigm where there's not a whole lot of women directors out there, you know, in Hollywood. Um, and so uh, she actually seems to have had a fairly somewhat lucrative career. She's still making stuff, but she started out doing TV and then she did the uh, first Brady Bunch movie. Um, the one with uh, the, what was that? Came out in like 1995 with Gary Cole and all that stuff on it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, she did Private Parts with your boy Howard Stern. Love that movie. Yeah, she directed that. Uh, she did 28 Days with Sandra Bullock. Yeah, uh, that's where she's like in rehab, right? Or something. Rehab, yeah. She's a drunk or whatever. Um, she did John Tucker Must Die, Alvin and Chipmunks the Squeakwool. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one's the good one. That's like the Empire Strikes Back of the Alvin and the Chipmunks movies. So. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 um, so, you know, I guess that's something worth mentioning if you have to talk well, about a movie. You know? <laughs> Private Parts is awesome. See, I've never seen Private Parts. What? Yeah, never have. Dude, you have if to you remember consider yourself, though, if you consider yourself a film fan, though, you gotta see. Yeah. Well, you have to remember whenever it came out. And, uh, you know, so... At the time, Howard Stern was this, this like highly controversial figure, and uh, my parents were like, "Absolutely not. There's no possibility of you watching that movie." You know, and so like I just never got around to it. You know. Well, I I own it, so next time I come by, I'll bring it. Okay. Back. You should, we should just watch it together. You said you like it a lot, so. I love it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I I think I mentioned on the podcast before Howard Stern is, is a big ins uh, inspiration to me. Yeah, you but th it. it's a really good movie though. Like the way that mm -hmm. they tell the story and everything is just good. Maybe we'll cover it. There you go. That'd be a good pick for a week. But uh, anyway, I guess. Uh, oh, so this is crazy. Speaking of podcasts and whatnot, I didn't realize that Jenna Elfman was a Scientologist. Um, is she? Yeah, and I guess uh, so. I was actually listening to you know like uh, Leah Rimini. Has that yeah. show on A and E? Yeah, and I'm sure you probably heard it, but I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast with her. Oh, you know I heard it. Yeah, dude, it was really interesting stuff. You know, it was. Like, I always thought of like Scientology as sort of being like this benign tumor that's 
kind of weird, but if that's what you're into, that's your thing, I guess, you know. And according to her, of course, I don't have any first-hand experience with Scientology, and I'm not taking a shot at you if that's what your your beliefs are, although I don't think I know anybody rich enough to be a Scientologist. <laughs> but, um, you know, my I guess the interesting thing about it was that, like, she said that it's actually, you know, according to her, a fairly destructive, you know, sort of thing, you know. She had no good i was just listening to it and i was just captivated you know by by some of the stuff that she was talking about but you know whatever the joe rogan also has another podcast with the father of the guy who runs scientology right now oh okay and he discloses a whole bunch of stuff too oh really okay yes yeah, so he doesn't go along with it i guess huh his dad no the the guy that he was interviewing no, the dad that uh, was in Scient- he was in Scient- he left Scientology. Oh, he left. Okay, I got after you. like thirty something years. Yeah. Well, and that was the crazy thing about Leah Rimini too was that she had it sounded like she had been in since she was like eight years old or something like that. You know, and she just got out like four years ago. <laughs> She's like in her fifties, I'm pretty sure. You know, so. Yeah. How did we but, get here? Uh, I don't remember at all. Oh, I was talking Jenna about... Jenna Elfman? Jenna Elfman, yeah, but I don't know. Apparently, they, I, she was saying that they treat like Tom Cruise like royalty, though. Like, they said that that's the most power that anybody could have without, like, you know, invading a country. <laughs> but, yeah, no, he's a big deal. Yeah. Anyway, completely off topic with that. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have anything that you would like to, to disclose or discuss before we start talking about... You can tell them kind of putting us off <laughs> about dr doolittle no let's talk about dr doolittle all right oh by the way <laughs> all right real quick this is actually based off of a uh, a book series i guess right yeah and i'm gonna have to find the dude's name real quick uh ooh, what was it something i don't even remember man um apparently this book or this movie has like next to nothing to do with the the overall books um i guess in the the book series let me see here Dang, where is this stupid thing fans love dead air yeah i'm glad you guys are enjoying this this is good times here you tuned um, in to listen to dr doolittle and you got a small talk about scientology and some <laughs> dead air <laughs> right. and uh mike's favorite uh, Eddie Murphy movie that he can't name. <laughs> yeah, 48 Hours is... Oh, never mind. <laughs> um, Hugh Lofting. That's the, the writer's name. I guess, so, with the the Dr. Doolittle books, what had happened was Dr. Doolittle was a doctor. He was not, like, a veterinarian. But he had, like, this parrot that he was learning how to communicate with and as it turns out i guess the parent became sentient and was actually able to like hold on a conversation not just repeat words back or whatever and uh so anyway this parrot went through and it told him about how animals can actually like communicate with each other and so like dr doolittle went through and he like for years would like pour over um like studying like the animal language and stuff like that learning how to communicate with animals instead of like having a natural ability to you know so so when he was talking to animals he was like talking in dog or talking in horse yeah so they could talk back but he wasn't like speaking english back and forth to animals right correct yes that is a he was more of like, like a tarzan yeah something like that i think maybe not as ripped but yeah <laughs> yeah but uh yeah so anyway that's that's neither here nor there really um all right let's go ahead and get this out of the way i guess <laughs> um so start us, norm mcdonald yeah. is talking mm-hmm. i love norm mcdonald me too yeah he's talking about animals talking mm-hmm. he uh <laughs> he does he introduce introduces us to john doolittle um, and John Doolittle is a dude that can talk to his dog, apparently. Ellen. His dog, Ellen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, I picked that out. Um, it's not the dog's there's... name. It's just the voice. Right. It was Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, to mm-hmm. the, the dog's voice. Um, he, uh, the kid that actually plays 
uh, the kid, Dr. Or kid John Doolittle. He's like a horrible actor, by the way. <laughs> Did you notice that? I mean, he only has like two lines. Yeah. He was like, why do you sniff each other's butts? <laughs> this is really bad. But, uh, but funny. Yeah, it was. Um, so anyway, his dad is walking down the street with him one day. The kid's walking his dog. Dad introduces him to a buddy, and like the, the kid goes principal. up there. Yeah, that's what it was. And uh, that was basically his dog. It said that like that's how we basically say hello to each other and introduce ourselves. And so he like, goes up to his principal's like butt and starts sniffing it. <laughs> and uh, so his dad <laughs> thinks that he's demon possessed. <laughs> yeah. So then we get an exorcist. Yeah. Where the dog bites the priest. Right. I like how the dog says, I'm going to bite you, before she bites him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, then the so, poor dog got sent away. Right. The dog got sent away. Um, John Doolittle stops talking to animals altogether. And uh, then we get Norm MacDonald talking about how he grew up to be like an angry adult and all this other crap. Um, we're introduced to John Doolittle's family once... The, now that we see adult John Doolittle, um, he has two daughters, uh, Maya, and Maya's all about like animals. She has a uh, like this big egg that she's like carrying around and like a little egg crate and stuff. Yeah, her swan egg. Yeah. And uh, then we have Raven Simone's Paprika, <laughs> uh, his daughter Charisse, and they don't really give her much to do in this movie, really. No, and you would think with like. It's, I mean, it's pretty big the, star power as far as characters yeah. go, you know. Yeah, she she's like the third most recognizable name in the movie. Yeah, easily. Um, but no, she, she we were introduced to her. She's like a teenage girl, kind of a chip on her shoulder, you know, too cool for dad, that sort of thing. Right. Whatever. Um, that's her entire character. Um, of course, he's married with a wife. The wife has a little bit more to do than... Raven Simone does, but not much. <laughs> Fantastic casting. <laughs> Is it serious or? <laughs> oh yeah, I enjoyed every moment she was on the screen. <laughs> right. That that one time that she did that thing, I think they talked at one point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's beautiful. Oh yeah, that's what. So I was watching this, and my wife was actually grocery shopping, and she comes in, and she's like, wow, she is really pretty. <laughs> she's yeah, she's like stunning. Really good-looking woman, yeah. I ain't gonna lie, puberty was kind to her. Um, so John Doolittle wants his youngest daughter, Maya, to go to camp. She doesn't want to go. Um, she's more worried about her egg and all that stuff. Um... So we find out that John is, I guess he has a couple partners and they all have this medical practice together. And they're actually talking about selling it. They stand to gain a bunch of money by selling this medical practice. Yeah, they're gonna sell it to an HMO called CalNet. CalNet, yeah. Um, so there's a little bit of a discussion about that at his job. The, apparently they're wanting to do this meeting on Saturday morning. Um, and then John's like, well, my my family, we're all talking about going out to the country and stuff on Saturday. And so I don't think I can make it, you know. And they're like, well, you got to be here. That's part of the deal, you know. Yeah, you got to be um, here. Mm-hmm. And so uh, anyway, why don't you take the reins for a little bit here, Mike? I'm getting tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're back at home. We meet Rodney. Yeah. We meet. Yeah. Well, wait. Do we? That's what yeah, we're well, down. I don't yeah, remember. we we do. <laughs> but we're at home, and uh, John Doodle is getting the family together so they can all head to the country. He's like packing them up, and then he's gonna meet with them later. Right. Uh, he calls Paprika Nutmeg. Yeah. And don't he, you give me that look. <laughs> and then he takes a. He's carrying a cooler, or the wife is carrying a cooler. I don't know what he's carrying. Anyways, they're Make walking the outside. Carry. Yeah, <laughs> sure he's not dead, right? <laughs> there's a there's a convertible uh, Mercedes sitting there, and he pretends like he got it for his wife, and she's all happy. Yeah. And no, uh, he's just kidding. <laughs> Minivans around the corner. Right. 
So he uh, sends them off to their uh, the, their trip, and then he goes to lunch. Oh, that's whenever Maya's like, "Oh, I left Rodney, her guinea pig." Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, he couldn't. She can't find Rodney, right? Right. Rodney's always escaping. Yeah, he's really. I'm, good at it. I never had a problem. Because we had guinea pigs growing up, like smaller animals, rabbits and stuff like that. And uh, I never had a problem with, like, oh man, this slippery bastard just up and left in the middle. Of the- no. <laughs> Latch the cage, you're- he's probably going to be fine, you know? <laughs> so, is it that night then? Or does he have to do the lunch? Um, oh, okay, the night before. Yeah, it's lunch. that night. And he gets so that he call goes to bed and- Yeah. Huh? I was just saying he got a call to go in for Miss Parkus. Yeah, uh, but yeah. first Rodney, like, crawls up the bed. Yeah. And Eddie Murphy and him look at each other and scream. <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, the uh, So, are we just going to spit out cameos, I guess, whenever we recognize a voice? <laughs> uh, name that voice? <laughs> yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, Chris Rock. Yeah. Doing a really annoying voice, by the way. It's not yeah, normal sounding Chris Rock. <laughs> it's really weird because he does his voice, but like more like nasally and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just gonna say, just more annoying in general. <laughs> yeah. I think if if you just ask Chris Rock, hey, what do you think a guinea pig sounds like when they talk? That's the voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um. I. I. It's for, for me. The voices in the movie are like something that's kind of refreshing about it i agree well and that's i don't know i I would assume that that was a thing that they're trying to do whenever they came out this movie is try to include a bunch of comedians um because it's all like a a bunch of pretty big names comedy wise you know that did a lot of these voices so well and really recognizable voices Mm -hmm. mm-hmm like as soon as you hear them you're like oh i know who that is right 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 but we'll get to them when we get to them um so he gets uh, after the little freak out with Rodney. Um, he gets a phone call a little bit later, saying that he has to go to the emergency room because one of his patients, Mrs. Parkus, uh, is like obsessed with shellfish, but she's allergic to it. And so <laughs> um, he's like, "Did you were you eating shellfish again?" She's like, "Only soft shell crab." He's like, <laughs> "What's I tell you?" <laughs> this, by the way, we, we're only like twenty minutes into the movie. And we've yeah. already seen her twice. Have we? Yeah. This is the second we saw her time? earlier when he was talking about the merger. Oh, with the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was in there in the uh, whenever they were at his office, yeah. Hmm. So and we, her we face is all swollen up again. Yeah. And we <laughs> this lady this loves just... shellfish, dude. <laughs> I think she's got a thing for the doctor. I, I She is putting herself through some hell to see this dude. <laughs> Yeah, she looks terrible uh, every time she comes in there with an allergy, but every time she does, she bends over, exposes her large (laughs) ass, and when uh, Eddie Murphy or John Doolittle gives her the shot, she's like, ugh. (laughs) It's really weird. uh, Do you think her ass was swollen up from the shellfish, or do you think she just had a big ass? I think it was a combo. Yeah, it could very well be. It was all red and patchy. I'm guessing that's from the allergy. Yeah. Otherwise, that is one not appealing Ugh. ass at all yeah <laughs> oh. um so what else happens here who cares he's um, driving home and he hits a dog yeah does he actually hit him because i thought he swerved and like missed him i think he like kind of like, gave him a little him. gave him a little kiss yeah yeah because you um, see the dog like laying down on the ground right and then and, he gets uh, up and calls it uh john doolittle a bonehead yeah <laughs> a bonehead and John Doolittle's tripping because he hurt yeah. it. It's Norm MacDonald once again. Yep. Yep. Um, so it was uh, after that he tells, yeah, uh, the dog tells him to watch where he's going, calls him Bonehead. They go to this business meeting that's taking Wait. place. Go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's like the next morning. Mm-hmm. Um, they're doing this outside on like this patio like uh, thing where they are doing this business meeting. Um, the guys with the HMO that are trying to buy out his practice, they talk about how there's probably going to be staff cuts and stuff like that. And then he just starts hearing all these animals fighting over food and stuff like that. Um, yeah, the birds are talking about bread, squirrels are talking about nuts. Yeah. 
they are. <laughs> Um, and at first John thinks that, uh, you know, the, he's like, no, I don't, I don't want any bread, you know, like that. And they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, anyway, um, he runs he, to his car. Yeah. He starts freaking out and goes to his car. And, uh, so he grabs up Rodney and he just decides to, to book it out to the country, go see the family. Um, I thought it was weird. So they're doing the country thing and then the daughter has to go to camp right afterward yeah um how much country are you trying to hit this girl with you know <laughs> like <laughs> well i don't know it seemed like it was just like the next day yeah i think that might have been like a thing where they're just gonna bring the whole family out there to like drop her off at camp might have been it yeah they stayed at a cabin yeah and then drop her off at camp the next day that's right. what i got out of it i got you it's not very um, far from home because he drives back and forth a couple times. Yeah, he does. That's true. Um, but there is actually a lot of like wooded areas and stuff around San Francisco where the movie's based, so I could oh, see yeah. that. Yeah, it's it's actually really pretty out there. But um, anyway, so he has Rodney uh, in the car with them in his cage. Um, all of a sudden, he hears Rodney start talking. And he starts talking back, not thinking anything of it, and then starts freaking out. And Blames it on potty car. smoked in college. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, uh, he does. Uh, he almost wrecks his car. And uh, he's actually uh, winds up, like, putting Rodney in, in his cage, like, strapping it down to, like, the top of the car because he doesn't want to hear him, like, cranking the music all the way up because he thinks he's, like, going nuts, you know? Yeah, they go through this little scene where he actually was going to leave Rodney. Yeah. Like, outside. And uh, they go back and forth between like an animatronic like puppet mm -hmm. and an actual guinea pig, right? And just CGI the mouth or whatever, yeah. Right. Uh, they go back and forth between that pretty quick, and they don't do a very good job with the guinea pig. Later, we'll see we'll meet a dog named Lucky, and they yeah. I think did a pretty good job on his puppet. Uh, I just noticed through the credits though, Jim Henson, his uh, it's his uh, his what's it called? Uh, his, his company, the, yeah, the Jim Henson Lab or whatever it is. Yeah, something. They're the other yeah. ones who did all the animal puppets in this movie. Right, that makes sense. There was some stuff, especially because uh, you know, not to jump too far ahead, but we see some stuff with a tiger later. Tiger yeah. actually looks pretty good, I think. Whenever yeah. they're doing the animatronic stuff, so like I the think bigger the, the animal, the better. Mm -hmm. They can put more detail into it and stuff. Yeah. I think that this was at a point where 1998, like the CGI just wasn't there yet um, to make it look convincing as far as like the, the CGI goes in my opinion, but the, the animatronics are pretty solid on some of this stuff. So, um, I guess, uh, anyway, he makes it out to the cabin where his family is at and, uh, like he's basically acting really weird at this point and, uh, they're like, why do you have Rodney on the roof? And he's like, oh, he's just getting some air, you know. <laughs> that sort of thing. Goes out there and starts, like, dancing with his other daughter because he doesn't want to talk about it. Well, I think he was hoping the music would tune out, like, whatever he was hearing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a, he's at it's at nighttime. It's about to go down. He's about to get down with that beautiful woman. Who? What's her name? The actress's name that played Lisa? Um, I'd have to look it up real quick here. Uh, I, I think remember. you had it written down or something. Well, it's on my phone. I um, I don't, you know, it was bugging me because I don't recall having seen her really in anything else either. Um, but let's see, what is this? This fine woman's name here. It is something. Uh, Kristen Wilson, apparently. Okay. His wife Lisa. Yeah. All right. So Kristen Wilson, Lisa. It's about he's about to hook up and mm -hmm. an, an owl, like calls him. Yeah. On or the she leaves, back porch. Yeah, she left the room for a second, and he's like, "I'm gonna go get in his bed naked." And then the owl's like, "Hey, you." Right. <laughs> and it's Jenna Elfman. Yeah, it is. Um, the Scientologist. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, she got a stick in her wing, and she wants the doctor to take it out. Mm-hmm. She does. Um, he goes through. Real delicately removes the stick, and uh, the owl's super happy about that. Really grateful. No scar, nothing, she goes on later to say. Um, and what is it? Um, 
he he starts freaking out um, again because what's he's not accustomed to hearing animals talk. Go ahead. Wait, well, he walks into a room and the fucking Rodney the guinea pig is like, "I know you can hear me," and he's like dancing and shit. Yeah. In front of him, so that kind of like fucks with him. So he like walks out the door and there's a raccoon talking, a possum talking, a skunk talking. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, Possum's sure trying to get in the trash. The I actually do like the raccoon's conversation because uh, he's going through and he's like trying to convince uh, Doctor Doolittle. He like has a can of tuna, and he's like, "Hey, get the the one in the oil. I don't like the one in the water." You know? Yeah. <laughs> All that stuff. Yeah. I don't know what the skunk was doing. He just like hiked his tail up. I was like. Psh. Well, he stepped on the smell skunk. It? Oh, is that what it was? I he got stepped you. on his tail. He's like, oh, I think you broke Mr. Stinky. Uh, I see. Uh, and so, yeah, they uh, basically, they they start asking him for stuff. He freaks out and leaves. Um, as he's getting ready to go back in his house in San Francisco, he sees these two rats fighting over trash. Um, I he called his buddy and asked him for a, a CAT scan. Yeah, in the middle of the night, he calls him up, mm-hmm. yeah. Wonder if you want to go out for a drink, or a cat scan, or, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed one of the rat's voices was, did you John recognize? John Leguizamo? Yeah, John Leguizamo. And I actually had the other one um, that I had uh, gotten in here, too. I'll be honest, I did not recognize the f- rat number one's name. Rat number one. It was Rennie Santoni. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, do we have any of the other ones that I think I? I don't think that we've gone through any of the other ones. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Oh, I guess the guy Jeff Doucette played the possum. Never, not familiar at all. Anyway, um, so uh, <laughs> he um, gets a cat scan. Everything's fine. Everything's good. He's good with the CAT scan because he thinks he's crazy. Uh, so the next day, he's actually getting ready to, after the, the CAT scan and all that. He's going to go back out to the country. Only oh, notice that dog that he hit or almost hit. There's apparently some bit of question about it. Um, he sees it in the in this dog catcher's truck, basically. I thought that was kind of a weird looking truck. Like they put the dog in like this pope mobile looking cage you know <laughs> yeah it's just an open cage yeah uh, so anyway he goes to the pound to get the dog and uh all these dogs are like talking to him there's a bunch of like movie prison quotes. cliches yeah <laughs> and uh they're talking about like uh whenever they grab lucky out to oh dead dog walking and all this other shit you know well one does a uh a, a, a sling blade impression yeah yeah <laughs> 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 and then uh, there was another movie quote. Damn it, I didn't write it down. No, me neither. But the, uh, then there was Green Mile one too. Right. So apparently all the dogs are big like movie fans. I guess, or it's just references. The the thing about it is, what does a dog in there have to do with Sling Blade? I guess because uh, you know Carl in that movie was in prison at the beginning of it before they let him lose. Maybe that's the joke. I don't know. <laughs> You know, I never thought of Sling Blade as like a prison movie, but anyway. I have no idea. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, and then he goes he to the vet clinic. Mm hmm. Uh, the vet's trying to get like the dog's temperature and his butt swallows a thermometer. Yep. Yeah. So That's where we vet... see a lot of that puppet from the dog. Yeah. It's, uh, it was definitely better than the, the guinea pig, than Rodney. Um. I so, like the waiting room. The waiting room was pretty funny at the vet clinic. I like the one dog that's going to get fixed. That's pretty funny. Yeah, there's the one dog. He, like, talks about his owners. He's like, is that the biggest ass you've ever seen? Oh, yeah. Um, and <laughs> then the like, other, there's, like, an older golden retriever. He's ignoring uh, his owner. She's telling <laughs> him to lay down. He's just ignoring oh, yeah. her. Lay down. She's like, yeah. She's like, he's deaf. He's like, I'm not deaf. I just can't stand listening to her. <laughs> Yeah. And then the, the, the German Shepherd, the, yeah. He's like, I promise I'll never look at another woman again, you know, and all this other stuff. And then <laughs> like, as soon as a female dog walks by, he's like, hey, good looking. Hey, baby, like that. And then they, like, grab his leash again. Oh, I'll never do it again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of funny. Um, kind of, 
We'll, we'll say that that's some low-hanging fruit, but it was still amusing, though, as far as the comedy goes. So. <laughs> There's a lot of that in this movie. Um, mm-hmm. So he takes the dog into the vet, and the dog's butt swallows the thermometer. And uh, so the dogs basically, like, uh, they have to go in manually and retrieve it. And uh, this is the scene where we see Jeffrey Tambor. Mm-hmm. And uh, so after they retrieve it, you got some... I. I actually like, I think it's a funny gag where the dog's like walking funny after they go in after it. No, it is funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... I laughed a little bit. I might have chuckled. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, man. I found myself chuckling throughout this movie more than I anticipated. I almost chuckled like twice. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just really obvious humor to me, you know. Did like, you watch it with, with Madeline? No, oh, we. So I, I started. Yeah, I started to turn this on with the kid, and we got like four minutes into it. She's like, "I don't care about this at all. <laughs> I'm gonna go play in my room." She said. <laughs> well, we went swimming like pretty much all afternoon. Yeah. So then, when we came back in the house, you know, her energy level was chill. Yeah. So she sat and watched the movie with us, and so every time she would like cover her mouth and like laugh, you know, it kind of made me laugh too. Right. Well, that's automatically going to be a better time, you know, watching it. So, with your kid enjoying yourself. Um, basically, Dr. John Doolittle decides that he's actually just going to turn, cut the dog loose. He's like, well, I'm your pet now. He's like, you're not my pet. Um, and then Lucky's so cool with it, though. He's like, you sprung me out, got me fixed up. Okay, good enough. Yeah, Let's, we'll, we'll call it fair, yeah. Um, anyway, he calls his... Uh, wife or does his daughter call him on the phone I don't know right who calls that? who but yeah it ends up with he, the phone, they're on the phone with Maya yeah and then all of a sudden Lucky sees or well the dog that doesn't have a name yet sees an opportunity he starts back in and barking in the background and she's like oh my god daddy got me a puppy you know and all that and so now he's kind of obligated to give her this dog you know um they come up with a name at first he, he's like how about i call you lucy he's like oh that's yeah it's a great name except i'm a boy <laughs> so he uh goes with the name lucky um we find out that his daughter maya does not want to go to camp she thinks that there's a very strong possibility that she might not make any friends um and then she just wants to go home with lucky instead no no nope. um, john says it's a uh, camp or no dog right I'm going to say, I think Maya actually might be like my favorite character out of this movie. Because I think that little girl is like super cute and she's not a bad actress at all, you know? And, you know, her her whole like character arc in this movie where like her dad thinks that she's kind of weird and doesn't appreciate her for, you know, kind of being different and all that other stuff, you know? I actually really like that subplot. I thought she was, I thought it was pretty solid stuff. Um, I can I can accept that. Yeah. Um, we cut to where we see the owl that Dr. Doolittle pulled that stick out of its wing that apparently is now telling Dr. or telling all the other animals like in the woods that Dr. Doolittle like was able to help it and it could understand him and stuff and if you have any problems you can go to this guy. Yeah, she's getting referrals. Yeah. <laughs> Unwanted referrals, but yeah. Mm-hmm. We see a drinking monkey. Yeah. <laughs> What's the joke? He's wearing a little circus costume and holding a little like uh, airplane Jack Daniels bottle. Mm-hmm. What's the joke there, though? <laughs> uh, at that point? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he just, he how often do you a see a monkey with an alcohol problem? That's not... Like, the, the one of the things I think is great about comedy is that it's it's identifiable. I don't identify with a monkey that's an alcoholic. <laughs> well, we don't, we don't even know he's an alcoholic yet. No, we he's don't. He's just standing there holding the bottle. Right. Um, and he goes, anyway, Ugh, Yeah. When the owl tells him about the doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, this is where we start getting some real big uh, like comedy cameos showing up. Um, because the animals start showing up at uh, Dr. Doolittle's apartment. He's about to hook up again. Yeah. These animals are cock blocking the shit out of this dude. <laughs> He's got like a 10 for a wife, and he cannot get five minutes alone with her. No, he cannot. 
<sighs> it's it's sad. It makes um, me really sad. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. So we get into here. Let's look. Um, so far we have we've had Lucky, we've had uh, Rodney the, the guinea pig, two rats. Now we get into where we see some other stuff. Like uh, Gary Shandling plays a uh, pigeon. That's my. That, I knew that voice immediately. Yeah, you cannot miss that dude's voice. Gilbert uh, Godfrey plays a dog. The dog that's like OCD about the ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I guess that's all I really picked out from that. Um, uh, we well not in this scene. In the next scene though, Albert Brooks is a tiger. Yeah. Which. It's kind of funny because Albert Brooks, from my understanding, he's a, a pretty great comedian, but he's pretty raunchy. But for whatever reason, he wound up doing like all these voices in all these kids' movies. Like if you've seen, uh, you know, Finding Nemo, then this guy's voice is, you know, undeniably recognizable. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah. Um. Anyway, he did the after all this crap goes on. Like, he winds up, there's all these ducks that are in his apartment, and he's trying to keep his kids from, or his daughter, um, Paprika, as she wants to be called. Uh, he's trying to keep her from seeing, like, all these animals running around and stuff. But she has to pee. Hilarity ensues. Uh, I wrote <laughs> that you're exact a moron. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Oh, I God. Like, I wrote, a ton of animals show up, hilarity ensues. <laughs> If you like stupid stuff, then it's hilarious. No. <laughs> it wasn't really hilarious. The The but only it was, thing... It was a bunch of set-up punchlines, set-up punchlines. Right. The only thing that I thought was pretty funny was whenever the ducks are like in the bathroom and his daughter's trying to use the bathroom... And uh, he's basically like going in there and like he's got this duck in his hand and like puts it in the shower or whatever. He's like, I'm just making sure the seat's down and all this. And like his daughter's reaction, like the look on Raven Simone's face. She's like, will you fuck off? Like, you know, I'm yeah. trying to pee, dude. Yeah, that was the, this. right. That was the funniest part to me. Um, well, he decides he's going to treat these animals. Mm-hmm. So Gary Shandling, the pigeon, and his wife, apparently, um, should, they're having marital problems. Right. You know, he, he can't seem to get an erection. They allude to that. Um, she <laughs> said he only get gets erections. excited when he sees robins. <laughs> right. He's like, I like orange breasts. What can I say? I like orange breasts, yeah. <laughs> and she uh, says something about, um, isn't it? Oh, he, he said, if if you look at me to the side, he was comparing himself to another bird. A blue jay. A blue jay, yeah. Do I look like a blue jay if I do this? Yeah. <laughs> if you look at my side <laughs> profile, don't I look like a blue jay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's really dumb. The there's monkey a, with the drinking problem. Mm-hmm. And uh, then there's the the dog that's like OCD about the ball, mm-hmm. and that's when Lucky's like, I can't say mall, dude. You know. <laughs> um, the, we even see he helps a police horse. Police horse, yeah. And uh, Give, makes a pair of glasses out of a couple magnifying glasses for him. Mm-hmm. Horse can't see. And it was really stupid because the horse is like, ha ah, no desk job for me. And I got this funny mental image of like this horse like standing at a desk in an office. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> well, for it's funny too. He says he's going to make lieutenant. And, um, right. I got the image of the horse like in charge of all the people. <laughs> or he's like at like this like promotion ceremony or something. <laughs> Walking yeah. across the stage and shit. Yeah. He's just like chewing out their asses every time they fuck up. <laughs> Yeah, he's like over the academy and shit. Yeah. See, this movie's hilarious. <laughs> no, we're like we're way funnier than this movie is. <laughs> I think anyway. My unbiased opinion on that. And so the drunk monkey tells him that uh, he let a tiger out. Yeah. At the circus, and now the tiger's gonna kill himself. Yeah, this is old Albert Brooks here. You bet. Um, I guess supposedly this tiger is having some health problems. He says he has headaches and double vision and stuff like that. And he basically wants to end it all. Um, while I'm sitting there watching this movie, of course me, I'm getting really bored at this point. And I'm like, animals don't commit suicide, like, intentionally, you know, (laughs) typically. Yeah, it was really weird. Yeah. Um, so he, uh, winds up. He convinces the tiger not to kill himself. 
Um, which we find out well, the tiger's was, name is Jacob. Yeah, I thought it was strange to bring suicide into like a quote unquote family a, movie. A kid's movie, yeah. <laughs> this guy like is legit trying to talk about killing himself. Um there was some funny stuff. He's like, Yeah, everybody loves tigers. He's like, name one tiger that everybody likes. And uh Lucky's like, Tony? <laughs> You're not helping. Yeah. Yeah, Lucky and uh, Jacob the Tiger, they have some funny one-liners between each other. Funny-ish, we'll say. Like, Lucky asks him to stop looking at him, like he's going to eat him. Right. (laughs) Funny-ish. They're at least telling jokes, whether they landed or not is up for debate. But uh, So, uh, he actually winds up calling the Jeffrey Tambor veterinarian to find out what he can about uh, this tiger's symptoms, like... He basically prefaces it by saying it's like, uh, you know, my cat has this going on and all that. And um, so I don't remember what happens, but the, the two rats are like outside one day and one of them's like having some health problems. And so he takes it downstairs to his office and uh, he's trying to get this rat like because uh, this rat apparently is having some serious issues. Um, <laughs> Uh, he's trying to nurse it back to health, and he winds up giving it CPR at one point because it's like flatlining. And, in front uh, of all his coworkers and right. his wife. And his wife walks in, yeah. And uh, the rat winds up farting, and uh, turns False out it was alarm. just gas. Well, how are you gonna sit there going to cardiac arrest from a fart, dude? <laughs> That's so dumb. It's not even a joke, you know. It's just idiotic. But he just gave mouth to mouth to a rat, dude. I'm not questioning many very foul, much things at this point. Right. I don't even so they know. Sent him to yeah. a nut house. They do. What was the name of that stupid place? The uh, the Hammersmith Retreat was the name of it. We got Paul Giamatti showing up. Yeah. <laughs> what a former fuck? classmate. Your former classmate? No, he's a former classmate oh. of. I thought you said he was... I was like, what the hell? Dude, it's a <laughs> school of Paul G- Like, that dude's way older than you, number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, like, man. I've known you this how long, and you've never told me this? Never said anything about... Well, and my thing is, is like, why would you lie about that? <laughs> if you're going to lie about one, you'd be like, I went to school with... Uh, I don't know, who's, who's a famous... Doesn't matter. <laughs> Nobody lies about knowing Paul Giamatti. I guess is my point. You know. <laughs> well, he's in uh, Private Parts, and the oh, same director. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, I just thought it was weird seeing him in this because he's actually like a highly like looked upon actor. You know, at this point, but he's in this animal talking movie. Um, he winds up, yeah, it was Dr. Doolittle's, like, old classmate or whatever, and the guy's pretty salty, because apparently he's pissed off that Dr. Doolittle, like, did better in school than he did. Doolittle was one in the class. Yeah. Giamatti's character was last in the class. Yeah. Um, I thought it was weird, because this guy's supposed to be, like, a therapist. Do therapists go to, um, like, medical school? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't think they would go to the same exact thing, but yeah, like the same they're courses doctors. and stuff. Well, yeah, that's. I mean, I I didn't know if there was like a difference between like the schooling you would go to for like a physical health and like a mental health, you know, or if you just kind of if they overlapped, you know. But there, there. I'm sure there is some overlap. I mean, I don't want to talk like I'm an expert on it, so I don't know. But I'm sure there's some different classes for each side, and then there's probably some classes they have in common. Yeah, like uh, like medis- medic- medicine and stuff like that, and prescription and shit, and it's adverse reactions, I'm sure, are kind of overlapping, but yeah. Yeah, like if I got a Bachelor's of Science in Engineering and you got one in Biology, we would have some overlap overlapping classes. Yeah. But anyway, he talks to his wife at the Institute, and she's like, I really want you to stay for 10 days just to make sure that you're okay, you're not having like a nervous breakdown or anything. Um, They wind up giving him this chimpanzee test I wrote down. Orangutan. Oh, is that what it is? Orangutan? Yeah, Yeah, he's not a chimpanzee. Like I care. (laughs) And uh, so they hook this orangutan up to like all these electrodes and stuff like that. Almost looks like a lie detector test. 
kind of. Um, and basically what they're trying to do is get Dr. Doolittle to like talk to this orangutan and get the needles on the machine to like have some sort of like a mental response basically. And uh, he can't make it happen. Um, go ahead and tell us the punchline of that one, Mike. <laughs> I'm just sitting here laughing watching you like talk about this. Because <laughs> you're like, you have, you're like, why am I fucking talking about like this? Like zero interest in it. <laughs> Uh, it turns out the the I'm just gonna call it a monkey, but he speaks Spanish, and so that's the the joke. <laughs> yeah, anyone who's like, oh, you got a monkey from south of the border. <laughs> Do habla español? He like starts speaking Spanish to the monkey, but they escort him back to his room. Right. Yeah. Um, um, the tiger's getting worse. He is. He is. Um, yeah. He he's still just like pacing back and forth, talking about how. You know, his head hurts and all this other stuff. He's struggling. And then he talks to his boys up at his job, and they're like, Dude, you've got to be out of your uh, institute by Friday, or else this buyout is not going to happen. You know? Um, so, Lucky he's the dog. Go ahead. He's watching Mr. Ed. John's watching Mr. Ed yeah. with some of the... And I think he's getting ready to tell... Because <laughs> the, they're saying, they're talking about how Mr. Ed talked. They put peanut butter in his mouth. To make right. him move his mouth like that, mm-hmm. and I think he was getting ready to tell them, no, some people can actually talk to animals, but he realized he's in a nut house and he just <laughs> shut up. Right. Yeah, these guys are already about to pop a spring. You know, you don't want to like, send him over the edge. You know. Um. So we uh, go through. Lucky talks to John. He goes to the hospital. He says that the tiger is not doing well. Basically, John's like, look, you know, everything was going great until you guys started messing with me. So my life was good. I don't really care that much about the tiger, and I really don't care to talk to you. He said, so I just want everybody to leave me alone. Let me live my life. It was pretty much his take on it. Um, the next day, he goes up to see Paul Giamatti, and he tells him he wants out. He said, get me out of this institute. And the guy's like, well, you know... I don't think you've been cured yet. And he's like, uh, basically, he got word from the cat that I guess Paul Giamatti wears pink tutus with a thong back to it. Yep. And uh, yeah, he's like, if you let me out, then I won't tell all of our friends about your pink tutu. Yep. Just hilarious. <laughs> I wish you guys could see Shane's face. Oh it's my god. It's killing me. <laughs> I'm literally sitting here with like from ear to ear just grinning. <laughs> I don't think I've ever cared so little about anything. <laughs> I feel like you're having your uh, Star Trek Five moment right now. <laughs> it could very well be. Could very well be. Um, so uh, Maya, whenever Doctor Doolittle makes it home, Maya's already there from camp. And I think the camp was what three weeks long. Yeah, but mom got her out early. Yeah, no, I she just couldn't didn't fit in. in. Yeah, which is kind of sad. I feel bad for this girl because she seems like a nice kid, you know. And she's smart. Yeah, super smart, and nobody appreciates her. And she even feels like her dad doesn't appreciate her, you know. Which mm-hmm. is really, you you never want your kid to feel like they're they're underappreciated by you, you know. Yeah, it's um, worst. Oh yeah. Um, so, but John just, decides... John's, yeah, go ahead, man. You oh, really, no, no, I can, yeah, yeah. Dude, you do this, please. <laughs> you want to talk about it, man, please. I, I really do. I will be the best out, little baby. listener you could ever imagine. <laughs> We're about to have some more dead air, everybody, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, basically, John starts ignoring all the animals. He just pretends mm-hmm. like he doesn't hear them. Um... Goes back to the office and he's doing things like the regular old way. Um, so his partners are like, "Yes, he's back." Um, it's that night they're getting ready for the news conference. There's going to be a, like a press release for the merger with Calnet. Okay. Who cares? <laughs> I don't know why this is such a big deal. Yeah. Right. I could see like if Google bought Apple. Like, okay, there's a press conference for you. Um, 
some HMO buys a medical practice. A small private practice. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to tell her? The press does not give a shit, you know. But anyway. It was really weird. Yeah. Uh, but they're getting ready for it, and Maya and Grandpa are in the back room. Mm-hmm. And Maya was like, turned off the light to her uh, incubator for her egg. Right. And she's like, I'm just done. This is stupid. You know, uh, and he basically was like, no, don't change. Sometimes the dads are the ones that need to change. Right. And Eddie Murphy overhears all of this and realizes that his dad is talking about when he was a kid, too. Right. So he packs this up This movie the has layers, man. It's yeah. so deep. <laughs> it's super deep. So he packs up the whole family. <laughs> And he takes them to the press conference and just fucking leaves them all there. Yeah. Um, by the way, I noticed he was driving with his dome light on. Who the fuck does that? Come on, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. I just I know he bounced on the whole family. Yeah. He dropped him off and left. He decided that he's going to go help the tiger. And uh, lucky he's in the back of the car. Um, but before he drops him off... Uh, John actually has uh, a word with Maya, which is, this is right here, like whenever he's talking to Maya, this is probably like my favorite part of the movie, Um, which, you know, (laughs) it's like finding your favorite part of your bowel movement, you know, (laughs) (laughs) but, um, you know, he's sitting back and he's like talking to her. He's like, hey, you know, I think that, you know, you're really smart and you're really pretty and, you know, um, you're, I... You know, it's okay if you like stuff that other people don't like. That doesn't mean that you're weird or bad or anything like that. He's like, being weird's cool, you know. And uh, he starts going into some different people that were weird throughout history. And uh, he's like, Joan of Arc. She thought she heard voices. And she's like, oh, like you. And he was like, yeah, I guess kind of like me, you know. And so that inspires him to go and start helping these critters again. Um... So he goes to try to help the tiger. Lucky's there. He uses Lucky to help him break this tiger out of the circus. Um, breaks him out. <laughs> Throws him in the back of the car. <laughs> I like how we see like the lion trainer like running after them with his whip. Oh, I didn't even notice. Yeah, He's barely awake. <laughs> right, so he steals a tiger. Right. Security's after him and all that shit. Yeah. Um, um, Maya brought Rodney with her to the clinic, and he's running all over the place. That's stupid, but yeah. We we see him with Shellfish Lady. More hilarious, hilarious whatever ensues. I yeah, don't even care she about sits the word. on him while she's eating crabs. <laughs> what is this woman's problem, dude? <laughs> she's got a death wish. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but uh, it's weird watching her eat this soft shell crab because I guess you can actually eat the shell from the soft shell crab. But it's weird watching somebody like, in my opinion, grab a crab leg and just start like gnawing at it. <laughs> so a soft shell crab yes. is a sh- crab who just shed its shell. Oh, okay. They shed their shell so they can so grow. So it's still it, pliable and yeah. Yeah, it's I just like you. eating the meat from the crab. I got you. Um, cause I know that there's this buddy of mine that, um, he used to work a lot on the road and he would go to like some of the new England States and they used to have, um, they would sell at like these little junk carts, um, where you would see like, they would sell like these, uh, soft shell crab sandwiches. And basically what they do is just take this crab and like fry it and then like Pull it out, throw it on a bun, put some mayo on there. <laughs> you just eat it like a hamburger, you know? It's yeah. really gnarly looking um, if you, like, look it up on Google. But he said that they're freaking incredible. So, you know, Do you whatever. not like crab? I like crab. You I hate go. picking it out of the shell. So something like that would be, like, ideal for me, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, Man, we got sidetracked the, again. It's Rodney. Yeah. Oh yeah, Rodney. He he's in the bathroom. This lady feels like she has to like hide this s- crab that she's eating in the bathroom. So she takes it into the stall, sits on Rodney. She winds up standing up. He falls in the toilet. She turns around, looks down, sees him. He sees her, and she like freaks out, unknowing. I don't know why. And then like tries to flush him. Flush him. Yeah. <laughs> like basically gives this guinea pig a swirly. 
Um, turns out that uh, John Doolittle has 10 minutes to arrive at this press conference or else like the deal is off, this HMO tells him. Um, so what is this here? Um, John brings the tiger to the operating room that's downstairs from the press conference. Um, what is it? His coworker buddies walk in. By the way, there's this whole subplot about how like one of them is like this money grubbing idiot that basically doesn't care about John or anything. He just wants them to get bought out so that he can take his money and run. But it doesn't really factor in. I guess he's like the closest that you could s that this movie has to having a villain, you know. But he's, um, not, he's not even a villain though, because he's honest about it. Yeah, he tells him straight up. He's like, I'm gonna be honest. I just want the money, you know. <laughs> and so. even that one one scene, like John Doolittle's like confiding something in him. He's like, I'm really the wrong guy to talk to about this. Right. I have like no empathy. Right. I mean, you that's can talk to our other the other guy. Yeah. I think it's refreshing to see a character that's open like that, you know. <laughs> I I can respect that, you know. Yeah. Um so he winds up um his buddies, there's the one that he's like cool with, and then there's the Oliver Platt one who cares what his movie name is. Um he they both go in and they see where John has this tiger that he's getting ready to like do surgery on. Well one and, broke uh, the other's nose. Yeah. Busted his nose because um, he was talking shit. The Oliver. No, he Platt just gets... opened a door into him. Oh, was that what it was? Yeah. I thought he like he... heard him talking and he like popped him. Like that was purpose. later. Oh, was that what it was? I got you. Yeah. That's how they got him on the gurney. Yeah. Um. So they wind up. <clears throat> they tell him that he has to be up there really quickly, and so he winds up. Putting the tiger on this gurney on like the underneath side and just draping blankets over it and then putting Oliver Platt with his busted nose on the top side of the gurney and then wheeling him up there into the conference. And um, so it's kind of a weird thing to do. Am well, I missing why they did that? They said they were taking him up for surgery because he broke his nose. Well, why'd they bring the tiger to the conference? They had to sneak him to the operating room. Oh, I thought they were... Oh, they were in, like, the x-ray room before. He was, like, right. looking at his shit. Yeah. And so, I got you. And then he just kind of, like... Oh, John's here. Come talk to us, John. Yeah, that sort of thing. I got you. And then, um... um when... They were going through, like, Callaway was like, We gotta do this now. Right. Yeah. This can wait. Mm-hmm. Um... So then the tiger from underneath these blankets and stuff in the gurney sees Rodney and he actually wants to eat Rodney, the guinea pig. He's like, ooh, and, live prey. Yeah. And of course Rodney's enjoying the buffet with the wings and the nuts and all the shit. Um, never seen a guinea pig eat chicken wings, but whatever. Um, anyway, everybody's freaked out from the tiger. Um, the uh, as it turns out, I guess the animals are like setting up this blockade outside so that the police can't get in. Yeah, the cops like, are all there. There's all these yeah. barnyard animals outside, telling the pigs to go home. <laughs> so the pig starts to leave. Yeah. Yeah. I got a problem with pigs go home in a kids movie, but you know whatever. <laughs> um, well, there's several curse words throughout the film too. Yeah, there are. There's a bunch of asses. And there's a few shits. Yeah. I've noticed that too, yeah. Um, there, the news has arrived to witness the operation that's taking place. Um, basically, dad's like, or mom's talking to John's dad, and she's like, he thinks he can talk to animals, and the dad's like, no, he really can. That's the end of that character arc, I guess. <laughs> um, she winds up going in there and actually like trying to uh, sue the tiger while he's being operated on. She like, puts his, her hand on his paw and all that. Um, do they ever say what the, the official prognosis is for this tiger? Like what his problem is? or The blood clot. Is that what it is? The blood clot? Yep. I wasn't paying attention. So. <laughs> well, they're doing the procedure. Eddie Murphy's yeah. trying, or John uh, Doolittle is trying to get, he doesn't even know really what it is that's in there blocking yet, but he's pretty sure it's a blood clot based yeah. off the symptoms. Uh, and then Jacob the tiger and him, like, talk to each other throughout the procedure that's how he knows where to go right yeah 
And um, it's a success. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wrote down, saves Tiger, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, he, uh, John Doolittle decides not to sell his private practice anymore. The deal is off. Yeah. And, uh... Pigeon shit. Pigeons crap all over, uh, Oliver Platt with his busted nose. Hey, hey, hey. Well, he got lands, his comeuppance, did like, you see in his the mouth. Shit, like, like, yeah, like, right on his lip. <laughs> it's disgusting, Half of it goes in his mouth. <laughs> Dude, so the same guy that I was talking about that likes the soft show crab and all that, he said that one of the times that he was traveling for work, he, uh, was, like... He went out to, I think he was in like South Carolina or something, like right on the beach. And uh, he said he was like laying on the beach and like a bird shit in his ear. Oh, God. <laughs> like, That's awful, dude. Oh, man. Um, actually, I have something that kind of goes along with that, too. So I went to go watch the, the movie Inception with the same guy, right? And uh, so what we would typically do is after the movie, like we just chill outside or whatever, discuss movie. All that shit, kind of like me and you are doing now, except never Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, the next thing I know, man, is uh, like there's this gust of wind that picked up. We're underneath this big overhang that was like the AMC 20 theater. You know which one I'm talking about. They got like this big overhang outside. I guess this gust of wind picked up and it like blew this dead bird that was up in like these rafters up there. And it like fell and it like hit me right on the head. This dead bird did. <laughs> and at first I felt something hit me in the head and I thought some joker was like uh, fucking like threw his drink at me or something. <laughs> and so I'm like looking around like pissed off. Like I'm going to beat some ass, you know. And uh, then I look down and there's this dead bird. <laughs> and then like the smell like hit me. I was like, dude, this is awful. You know? <laughs> it was I weird. I saw that. Yeah, it was pretty great. Um. We cut ahead to, I guess it's the... <laughs> what are we doing? I don't know, man. I'm rethinking uh. life. Life choices. Um, the the next day, is it Rodney sees the egg start to hatch? Um, or it's sometime later, I guess. I don't know that it's officially the next day, but... Uh, Maya's stupid egg starts hatching, and it's uh, not a swan, or it uh, instead is an alligator. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and uh, saw that coming a mile away. But uh, the alligator like thinks that Rodney's its mom. <laughs> Love that. So dumb. <laughs> Rodney said no, so then he asked Lucky, "Mama." Yeah. Lucky He's said like, no. He he actually says. Uh, uh, I don't think so. He said there was that one time when I got really drunk in the Appalachians. In the Ever- in the Everglades. Everglades. Yeah. Appalachians. <laughs> <laughs> Appalachians. <laughs> Those damn mountain alligators. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, so we see where uh, John takes Lucky to the circus, I guess. Um, they're just like walking toward it. And then, like, the owl, like, scares the rats. That's basically how the movie ends. <laughs> Not with a bang, but with a whimper. <laughs> what a dumb movie. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it more so than myself, though. So I guess that's something. But Hey, man, I think the key to that is that I watched it with my kid. Yeah, I think so, too. And she thought some of that stuff was pretty funny. Well, yeah, and I could see there's there's a lot of juvenile humor that I think a younger person might appreciate. So, yeah. <laughs> but, Anytime you uh, say ass and fart and shit, you know, kids giggle. Right, yeah. Yeah, they love that shit. <laughs> um, my question was, why, oh, why would they have all these comedians like Gilbert Gottfried and Jenna Elfman and all these guys, uh, Albert, or... Um, Albert Brooks show up and like not do anything funny with them. <laughs> These are comedians. Give them something to do, you know. But I digress. Um, what was your overall opinion of this movie, Mike? Uh, you know, it is what it is. It's a cute little family movie. Yeah. It's, a, <laughs> it's not anything that like I don't think it's going to be on Fair's new favorite list of movies right. to watch, but. Yeah. We had a good little evening watching it. 
turn your brain off and enjoy something, you know? Yeah. Um, I notice when they say a family movie that they uh, they really mean a movie that kids will like and parents kind of have to tolerate. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the whole family that's a kids movie but whatever yeah so but uh that's Dr. Doolittle I guess mm-hmm. um do you have any idea what we're watching next week Mike none <laughs> I'm clueless I do I we've been waiting for this for a long time actually uh we're gonna be watching Armageddon next week so <gasps> yes I know <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of pumped to to have you watch this movie analytically and see if your opinion changes. So, but um, maybe it won't. You know, I'm just excited to to hear your opinion. To quote my daughter, I'm so excited. <laughs> That's it, man. Um, so there's that to look forward to. Um, what are am I? Oh, what are you watching right now? Uh, we watched. What did we watch? The night before we watched two movies. We watched um, Death Wish with uh, Bruce Willis. Bruce, yeah. Was it any good? Hmm. Yeah. I like the original Death Wish with like. Yeah, Charles it wasn't Bronson the original. No. It wasn't like that. No. Mm. Um. That's too bad because I like movie? Bruce. We watched another movie too. Oh, Game Night. Oh yeah, I like Game Night. That's pretty yeah. funny. Game, I thought Game Night was really funny. I'm uh, I'm kind of a Jason Bateman junkie, so same. Yeah, uh, yeah. He already had some brownie points stored up with me. And, um, uh, I've been watching Goliath, which is an Amazon Prime series mm. with Billy Bob Thornton. Oh yeah, can't go wrong with that dude. It's really good. Yeah, he's a good actor all around. Um, I was reminded of uh, what was that thing that I was watching? I don't remember. It had something to do with Billy Bob. Oh, I, it was uh, the Fargo TV show. He was in like the first season of that, and he was fantastic, bro. <clears throat> I never watched that show. Oh, really? It's pretty mm-hmm. good. Um, so it's each season is kind of its own self-contained story, you know. And so um, with the first season, the first season is probably like the best one. But I, this last one had Ewan McGregor in it, and it was pretty good too. So. Nice. If you get a chance, to check it out. Um, I watched this weird movie called Predestination with Ethan Hawke. And uh, it was pretty decent. It was the whole storyline was that uh, basically the government had actually discovered how to conduct time travel in the year 1981. And um, so what had happened was he was actually this guy that he was <clears throat> this agent for the government that was sent to basically like these certain like catastrophic events or whatever he was sent into the past and he had to try to alter them and prevent them from happening and uh that has a certain amount of like time loop stuff in there and whatnot but it was actually pretty good um let's see what else did I, oh me and the wife we watched uh, jurassic world fallen kingdom the other day how was that it didn't do much for me sadly really <laughs> I didn't care for it, which is really crazy because I thought the first Jurassic World, like, well, it wasn't like the best thing ever. Like, it's no like uh, Jurassic Park or anything, but it was pretty good. You know, I enjoyed it. Um, but this one wasn't too impressed with. No. Nope. I'm going to preface this by saying that at any given time, whenever me and Mike are talking about, uh, you know, like what we watched, you can always assume this during the course of like the week i've probably watched one of like three things um star trek in some iteration <laughs> uh at arrested development episode or maybe several or like this is my comfort food show to watch but that 70s show it's really stupid but i like it so and this week i watched that 70s show and star trek 3 the search for spock so <laughs> there you go <laughs> hmm. but uh yeah, so there's all. I don't that have stuff. anything like that. Oh really? Nope. Oh man. Yeah, to me, like that '70s show is like mac and cheese. You know, like nothing else on. I'm gonna go watch. You know, what's his face? Uh, Ashton Kutcher making an ass out of himself. You know. 
It's never. I mean, not I like the show. I just don't have anything where I'm like my go-to time to put this on. The last time I had something was like that. It was Friends. Oh really? Yeah. That was like the last thing where I was like, I got to make sure I watch it. Hmm. Wait. I never. No, no, I guess that that's not true. But I don't have any show that like just on any given day I'm like I'm gonna put this on. I always like to watch this. Yeah. Well, to me, that 70s show, like, hey, we're cleaning the house, and, you know, I don't want to sit here in silence while I'm, like, doing this crap, like, sweeping or whatever. I'm going to put on that 70s show so I can hear these guys do their thing, you know? Oh, we turn on music when we clean. My wife likes to do that, too, but if she turns on music, then I can't hear my that 70s show, so. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, anyway, uh, final thoughts about any of the proceedings. Um, it's going to be interesting to listen back to. <laughs> it will. My energy level is just kicking ass today, man. <laughs> oh, man. I can't I tell like, you. Through half of this podcast, uh, while we were recording, Thunder was just like dominating in the background here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My wife was opening the garage door like right below me. <laughs> <So> <laughs> hopefully that doesn't show up too prominently in the recording, but... Um, uh, I will say that I'm looking forward to next week quite a bit though because I think that it's going to be an interesting discussion because you're old Armageddon junkie right are we going to do that so. we'll be, we should be able to do that one in person as well uh, next weekend yeah we got uh, a little birthday get together going on so we should be able to get that knocked out we should try to watch it together I think okay but uh, yeah Anyway, if you would like to get in contact with us, we can be reached at uh, cheesymovie at yahoo.com is our email address. Our Twitter, Casino Royale WCH, all one word. Uh, Facebook is Casino Royale with cheese, all separate words. YouTube handle Casino Royale W Cheese, all one word. The same goes for pot, or the iTunes, or wherever you get your podcast from. And uh, like you can also follow us on Instagram, Casino Royale W Cheese. And I think that might be it for me, homie. That's all I got, brother. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody, for listening. Hopefully, you had a much better time than I did. <laughs> and uh, make sure you join us next week for Armageddon. Bye. Bye. I'll be back.